Hello guys, this is Edgars from SpokenLithuanian.com here with you today. Uh, in this lesson, I want to show you how my method, Automatic Lithuanian, works. I've been using this method to teach Lithuanian language, to teach uh, English language. So I decided to start a channel to just help you learn Lithuanian language faster, help you learn spoken Lithuanian, the way it's spoken in the streets. Okay, um, so we won't be using... In this first lesson, we won't be using many different words, okay? I just want you to learn the structure of the language. But if words and phrases is what you want to learn, uh, I've created an audio book. It's an audio and PDF book that you can just download for free. Um, you will find it at this link, www.spokenlithuanian.com slash 117 phrases, or you can just press on the link somewhere around this video. I, I'm sure you will find it. Uh, this is an audiobook and a PDF book, okay? So you can listen to the phrases, you can watch, you can see the way they're written, and you can just repeat it until these phrases are like a second nature to you and, and until you can uh, say these phrases when you're woken up in the middle of the night, okay? So if you want that, it's completely free. Join my newsletter once you uh, press the link. You will get weekly lessons and you will get this free audio and PDF book sent directly to your email. Okay, so this automatic Lithuanian is a method where you actively participate in learning. So that means this is not a video that you just watch and uh, like a simple movie or a TV series. Whenever you see words that you already know and whenever you see them written in uh, English language, up here, right, on the upper part, you have to press pause and answer and think through these answers in Lithuanian language, okay? This is how you actively participate in the lesson. This is how you learn. So you can do this either in your head or and if you're not afraid and nobody's listening to, listening to you, you can do this um, out loud, okay? But just actively participate, actively be in this lesson, and you will see how these phrases and these words um, start to go automatic, automatically, right, in your head. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so let's start with a simple one. Um, I, the word I, in Lithuanian language is ash. It basically answers the question who, it's a nominative case, um, word, and for I, you use ash, ash, right? Okay, so the word, the verb to be in the infinitive form in Lithuanian language is būte. Būte means to be, just basically, roughly, to be, because in English language, when we want to make an infinitive, we have the to. This particular word in front of the um, in front of the verb, but in Lithuanian language we have this ending t, which gives us indication that this is an infinitive form that we're talking about. Okay, so to be means būte. Now, if I want to say I am, you see in English language we have this particular form of the verb to be, which is am that we use for the first person singular. And it's the same in English, in Lithuanian language as well. We have this form, which is esu. Esu, right? So you say, aš esu, that means I am. Now the difference in Lithuanian language is that uh, very usually we are able to not use the subject, in this case, aš. And we can just say esu because the word itself, its ending, gives away that it's the first person, it's me that's talking, right? When I'm saying aso, it means that ash aso, not somebody else, right? So the verb itself, itself gives away that, okay? So that's why we are able not to use it. Now, I want you to pay attention that in this case, we have the red color for the subject, the one that's doing the action, and the yellow color for uh, the action that is being done by the subject. And this is the way it's going to be throughout this lesson. So whenever you see uh, English version of the sentence, I want you to just pause the, pause the video if you have to and just tell me the Lithuanian answer for yourself. If you have to do it, uh, do it in your head. If you can, if, if nobody's listening and uh, you're not afraid, do it out loud. 
but the, the thing is you have to actively participate in this lesson, okay? So, okay, so I am, once more, would be either a chasseau, a chasseau, or just a so, a so, right? Okay, let's go on. Now, the word you in Lithuanian language is to, to, just to. Now, the difference between uh, this you that we have in English language is that to is just a singular, singular second person word, okay? So, if you want to say plural, because you can also be plural, you all, right? Um, you have a different word, and it's usually the word that's used when you want to politely address somebody. But if you if it's just a friend, you can say to, which is the word for you, singular, in Lithuanian language. Okay, so now if you want to say you are, you are, you are, that would be to esse, to esse. Now you see the difference. We had a so for the first person, right? And you, we have this esse, a little bit different ending, right? For the word, uh, um, for the form of to, to esse. And as with a so, we can we can use just esse because the ending already gives away that it's the second person, right? So you are is either to esse or just esse. To esse. Good. Here, here means cha. Cha. The word for here is cha. Cha. Now, how would you say I am here? Now, this is the part where you press the pause. And if you're fast, you can answer it without pressing the pause, you know, but you have to think it out. You have to understand the sentence, the sentence structure, the way it's, uh, it has to be said. So, I am here would be... I am here. The book. Now, how would you say you are? You are. How would you say you are? To esse, right? To esse. If we're saying the whole phrase, right? We're not just saying the verb, but the whole phrase would be to esse. To esse. Good. So, how would you say you are here? You are here. How would that sound? You are here. To esse cha, right? To esse cha. Now the verb is different, right? It's not esse anymore, it's esse. The ending is different. To esse cha. Okay, so now when it comes to a question, we have this question in English. Are you here? Now we know in English language when we have the verb to be, we just switch places, the subject and predicate. The one that's doing the action and the action that's being done. So if the um, affirmative sentence would be, you are here, the question is, are you here? You and are just switch places, right? Now, in Lithuanian language, it's a bit different. What we do in Lithuanian language is we just add the, the word ar to the beginning of the question. This word ar, it's not the same as this are because this are is a verb. Now, this is just a simple question word that we use in the beginning of a question in Lithuanian language, right? Ar. Ar. So, you see that we have this tu esse cha, which is just a simple affirmative sentence. We don't change anything, we don't, uh, you know, switch anything, play, nothing switches places, right? Uh, but we have this ar in the beginning. Ar tu esse cha. And this makes it a question. Are you here? Ar to esse cha. Without the ar in the beginning, right? You're just saying to esse cha, and this is a perfect affirmative sentence. You're saying you are here. Now we added ar, ar, and now we have a question. It's just when it comes to pronunciation, uh, bear in mind that ar, this is the way we say it, ar, ar. It's like a pirate saying ar, right? In English language. But this ar, Ar is used for all, um, for all persons, right? For all tenses, 
and this ar is not so uh it's not so heavy it's like a, a little bit lighter ar ar not r but ar ar to esicha are you here okay let's move on now if we want to say are you here we can do it a little bit differently we can say ar to cha as you probably understood the s this s yellow part is optional it's actually optional because sometimes we don't even have to say the verb in lithuanian language itself because uh this verb especially the verb to be it's implied it's like you would be saying uh you hear and sometimes we can say that in english language when we when we're speaking when it's a spoken language but it's not a correct english but it's a correct lithuanian language you can just say artucha and the s part is implied you can imply the verb to be in Lithuanian language. Ar to cha or ar to esicha. Both of these are actually correct. You can say both of them. Now let's rehash a little bit. So how would you say I am in Lithuanian language? I am. That would be ashaso, right? Ashaso. Now, over here, you're not uh, removing a so part because without it, there would be just ash, just I, right? There's nothing to imply. But now when you have this word like here in the last sentence, here, a place, now there's something to imply, you know, that I am here. But I'm just saying ash cha, right? Okay, so I am would be ash Am I here? Now, how would you ask that? Am I here? That's a crazy question to ask, right? But uh, sometimes we just have these crazy questions that we want to ask. So how would how would that be? Am I here? That would be ar ash esucha, ar ash esucha, or just ar ash cha, ar ash cha. You can skip the esu part, right? You can skip this esu. And just say ar ascha. Both of these are correct. Now, in spoken Lithuanian language, we usually uh, skip on the asu part. We usually omit the verb to be because it's it's just easier that way. We're we're used to implying the verb to be, and we would say like uh, we would say ar ascha, just like that ar ascha. But it's okay if you're saying Arasha Sucha, it's fine. It's it's a normal sentence. People speak that way. It's just usually we, we omit it. Okay? So am I here once more would be Ar Ash Sucha or Ar Ash Cha. Good. Let's move on. Now the word happy. And I'm uh, highlighting singular here because happy singular would be either Limingas with the ending AS. Or liminga with without the s, and the difference is that limingas is a masculine gender, and liminga is a feminine gender. Yes, we have in Lithuanian language, we also have genders, right? We have genders for nouns, and we have genders for adjectives, which is happy. Okay, so happy limingas liminga. I know there are a bunch of these rules, um, new rules that I'm dropping on you, but just bear with me because I will make it as simple as I can. You know, and throughout a bunch of these lessons, you will learn these uh, grammar rules that you have to learn to be able to speak Lithuanian. But for now, just happy limingas if it's a masculine gender, right? And liminga if it's a feminine gender. Good? So how would you say, I am happy? I am happy. Now, I think the question that immediately comes to your mind is whether or not I should say differently if I'm a male or a female. And you're right. You would be saying either Asha Sulimingas, Asha Sulimingas, or you would be saying Asha Suleminga if you are a female. I would say Asha Sulimingas because I'm a male. Asha Sulimingas. But if you are listening to this and you're a female, you would be saying Ash Asu Liminga. And as I said, 
we can omit the verb to be. And in this case, we would just only be saying ashlimingas. If I'm a male, right? Masculine. And ashliminga if I'm a female, right? That's what I would be saying. Ashlimingas, ashliminga. Or ashasulimingas, ashasulimingas, if you want to use the verb to be. It's entirely on you if you want to use it or not. Okay, so now, how would you say you are? Try to remember that, okay? Try to actively participate in the lesson. As I said, this is the way the method works. You are would be to esse, right? To esse, to esse. This is what you would say to a friend, um, someone you know very well, because if it's someone that you don't know, you would be using a different word. I will tell you all about it later. But for now, just bear in mind, this is for a very close friend, someone you can address easily. You are to esse. You are happy. Now, how would you say this? You are happy. You are happy. You would say that either to to esse limingas, to esse limingas, or you would say to esse liminga. It depends on this person's gender that you're talking about. If this person is a male, you would say to esse limingas, and if this person is a female, you would say to esse liminga. Either one of those. But this is just for singulars, right? We have also plurals. But for now, to is a singular word. To. To es elimingas and to es eliminga. And as always, you can omit or skip the es word. You can say to lemingas, to leminga, if it's for a female. I am happy. I am happy. How would you say I am happy? That would be Asha Sulimingas or Asha Sulimingga. Asha Sulimingas, Asha Sulimingga, or if we're skipping the SO word, Ashlimingas, Ashlimingga. Good. Smart also for singular. For now, we're just working with singular uh, words. Smart would be Protingas, if it's a male, and protinga, if it's a female. Protingas, protinga. You can see the, mm, the pattern here, right? We had limingas, liminga. The AS ending is for male. The simple A ending is for female. Those are the endings that we have for now, right? Protingas, protinga. We have different endings, by the way, but just for now, I chose similar uh, adjectives with similar endings so that it would be easier for you to just grasp these two. So we have smart, protingas, protinga. Good. You are smart. Now, how would you say that? Again, press pause if you have to. Think about it. Think through it. And tell me. Well, tell it to yourself, but just do it. You are smart. Now that would be to esse protingas or to esse to esse protinga. To esse protinga. Now we can omit the esse part and can say to protingas, to protinga. To protingas, to protinga. That is without the esse part. And just remember the as ending is for male and the a ending without the s is for female. Good. Now we have our first adverb, which is very, very, and very is labe, labe, labe. This is how you pronounce the word very. You, you would say labe, labe. So, okay, how would you say you are very smart? How would you put uh, together a sentence like that? You are very smart smart you are very smart would be to esse labe protingas or to esse labe protinga if it's a female 
tu esi labai protingas, tu esi labai protinga. Ok? And as always, I will repeat it until you uh, learn it, uh, that we can omit the verb to be. We can say it without a s part, right? We can say it without this yellow word. We can say tu labai protingas, tu labai protinga. Okay? Either one. You can say it both ways. Tu esi labai protingas, tu esi labai protinga. Or, tu labai protingas, tu labai protinga. Good. Now, if you want to say you are, and you are not. Now, in English language, we're just uh, adding the word not to all of these forms of the verb to be. We have uh, are, is, am, or we're just saying am not, is not, are not, or we're contracting it if we want to. Now, those are different kinds of words um, when it comes to Lithuanian language, but they're kind of similar because we're just basically adding one letter uh, to, the, to the front of the, ver of the wor word, of the verb, basically. So your the the positive sentence, the affirmative sentence would be to esse, but the negative sentence would be to nesse, to nesse, which is basically added the n letter n to the beginning, and we're saying to nesse, to esse positive, to nesse negative, okay, to nesse negative. Now let's see what happens with other person with another person. We have I am, positive sentence, right? Affirmative sentence. And we have I am not, we have negative sentence, right? Okay, so this is what happens. Ash so, we have the affirmative sentence. Ash neso, we just added the N letter to the front of the word so. Ash so, ash neso. Okay? can see the pattern. Tu esi, tu nesi, aš esu, aš nesu. Okay? I am not means aš nesu. Aš nesu. Now, how would you say I am not very happy? You know all the words. You just have to press pause or if you're fast, maybe you've already answered. How would, how would this question go? How would this sentence go? I'm sorry. I am not very happy. That would be aš nesu labai laimingas if you are male or aš nesu labai laiminga if you're a female. Aš nesu. Aš nesu labai laimingas. Aš nesu labai laiminga. Now, the thing is, when you have this negative verb, Nesu, instead of esu, which is positive. You cannot skip it. You cannot omit it. Because if you're just saying ash mingas without this yellow nesu uh, word, how would I know whether or not it's positive or negative? Yeah, so we can only omit it if it's a positive sentence. It makes it into a positive sentence, an affirmative sentence. But ash nesu mingas, we have to use nesu word here, because we want to emphasize that it's a negative sentence. Aš nesu labai laimingas, aš nesu labai laiminga. Okay? Good. How would you say, you are not very smart? Again, press pause if you have to think about the answer. You are not very smart. You are not very smart. That would be Tu nesi labai protingas or tu nesi labai protinga. Either one of those depends on the gender, right? Tu nesi labai protingas, tu nesi labai protinga. You are not very smart. Tu nesi labai protingas, tu nesi labai protinga. Good. Now the word for but, a conjunction, a word that joins usually to grammatical sentences together is bet. Bet. We have but in English language and we have bet in Lithuanian. It's like 
making a bet, betting on something, right? Bet, bet. This is the Lithuanian version of this word. So how would you say? You are very smart, but you are not very happy. Sometimes that can happen, right? You are very smart, but you are not very happy. Press pause if you have to. Think about all the words that we just learned. You know all the words. You can make this long sentence. Um, you just have to think about it. You are very smart, but you are not very happy. Would be... Tu esi labai pratingas. Pratinga. Bet... Tu nesi labai laimingas or laiminga. Tu esi labai pratingas or pratinga, if female, bet tu nesi labai laimingas arba laiminga. Tu nesi labai laimingas or laiminga. Tu esi labai pratingas, bet tu nesi labai laimingas or tu esi labai pratinga, bet tu nesi labai laiminga. Because we can't change it, right? If, if we have pratingas here, we have to have limingas here. And similarly, if we have pratinga, then we have liminga here. So once again, two versions. Either tu esi labai pratingas, bet tu nesi labai limingas, or tu esi labai pratinga, bet tu nesi labai liminga. And another thing that we have to pay attention to is that... Um, in the first sentence, in the first part, because it's affirmative, we can skip or omit esse. And we can say, tu labai pratingas, bet tu nesi labai laimingas. Nesi is the word that has to be here, because it emphasizes that it's a negative sentence. Okay? So there you have it. We can already make these long sentences with just these words that we have learned today. Okay? Okay, guys, so this was the first part of this um, one big automatic Lithuanian lesson that I wanted to share with you. This is a trial lesson, a first lesson, so be sure to look for, for the part two of this, of this lesson. And m let me know in the comments, does this seem like a good way of learning a language? Does this seem like a good way of learning a Lithuanian language? Uh, maybe you've tried something before. I want to know all your thoughts that you have on this. So make sure that you share your thoughts with me in the comments. And as I said before, I will repeat myself a little bit. If you haven't downloaded the free audiobook and the PDF book, 117 uh, Most Common Lithuanian Language Phrases, do that now. Press the link um, below this video or enter this link that you see here uh, on the screen and you will be uh, directed to my newsletter where you can enter your email, download this book, and you will get it directly into your email box, okay? So, yeah, as I said, be sure to look for part two, comment and tell me whether or not this looks like a good way of learning Lithuanian language for you, and thank you for watching, thank you for your attention, and I hope I will see you in the next lesson. Bye.